Hi, welcome back to part three of animating and doing stuff with the WS2812 LEDs. In this video, what we're going to do is carry on where we left off from the last video. And in the last video, we created like a, a Knight Rider effect going across on the LEDs, just like this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to disconnect this LED strip and we're going to connect it up with the larger panel that I made. And the larger panel was made up of 10 strips of 10 LEDs. And these are all just kind of like stuck down on a bit of cardboard like this for the moment. Um, so I'm going to disconnect the 30 way strip and I'm going to connect up the 100 way strip. There we go. And you can see I've slightly improved the, the effect, which at the moment is now just going top to bottom and it's doing the effect as we showed last time, which was the uh, raise the LEDs up and then take the LEDs down slowly. Now, if you haven't seen that, that's in part two of our series of videos. So uh, check that one out if you want to learn how to do the arrays um, and basically working out the levels going up and levels going down. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to put in the RS232 interrupt and then we're going to put down the flame effect from the computer. And I'm also going to go through how the basic software works to animate the flame and send it as RS232. But before I do that, I thought you might be interested to see exactly what was going on inside the 2812 LED. And this is quite interesting to see. I've got my my little micro camera here and my Ninja 5 recorder just coming out on an SDI connection. And uh, I'm going to press record and let's have a look inside a 2812 LED. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go quite close into the LED. And if I turn the camera around, you should be able to see, I line it up properly. There you go. I'm going to turn the light on and you should be able to see a little bit clearly. So I'm going to turn this monitor around so I can see. So where we go into the LED, I'm going to, you, can see, you can see just at the top there, that's the, the actual circuit inside the LED. If you can just about see it, get the lighting right. There we go. So you can see the little circuit and then you can see the actual elements, the PN junctions, which are, it looks like they're actually glued to the metal tabs. Let's see if we can get any further into, let's just see if we can extend this lens out a little further. And you can see the tiny connectors on the board. And it's going again. Let's make this lens come out a little bit further. It might be interesting to somebody just to see what's kind of going on. But without, there we are. Let's go down a bit more. There we go. I <laughs> thought it might be kind of quite interesting for someone to see. Now, the other thing which is of, of interest on these uh, strips is, um, let me just basically pull this lens back in. There we go. So you'll see at the front here, there's a, a five volt line at the bottom. There's a ground and there's a data in line and you'll get a small arrow where the L where the data is going in, and that's the direction that it, of the flow. So then you'll get a DO pin, which is the data out, and then you'll get a DI for the next LED. So they're easily cuttable. See the little sign there for, for the scissors? And there we go, that's our little LED. Anyway, I thought it might be quite interesting to see um, how they work. In this section, the, the, the data's coming in this way, and then it's going looping round, and then it's going round here, and round here, and round here. So that's how you can see at the moment, the LEDs are just going backwards and forwards. 
from zero to 100 and then going back down to zero again. OK, so time to tidy the desk. I'm going to remove the 30-way uh, strip because we don't need that one anymore. And we'll stick that one over there. OK, so we've got our 100 by 100, uh, our 10 by 10 LED matrix running, or our uh, LED strip. Uh, so what we can do, I'm just going to show you. There we go. You can kind of see it, see it running. I'm going to show you uh, here. This is the code for that one quickly. And th don't forget, this code is also in the description down below. Um, so it was quite a quite a simple code. This is this is the ASM code, um, which again is available to you. Um, so we had flash LED, which is our little LED on the board. Raise LEDs, lower all LEDs fast, and we've got send LEDs. So we're only using really three functions in this. So raise LEDs. So every tenth time we run this function, we are checking to see if the index of the LED is 100 or if it's 0. If it's 100, we're going to go back down. If it's 0, we're going to go back up. And we then set the LED to 255. And lower all, LED, lower all LEDs. Every tenth time in the effect, we are then going through all the LEDs and reducing them all down by 10 every single time and that's how we kind of get that effect so have a look through that file uh, it's actually quite simple um, to understand I hope <laughs> uh, and you should be able to understand that one if you if you want to use it but that's not the one which we want to deal with okay so I'm going to download the s20 interrupt file into the electronics so I'm just going to run that down and let's see what happens. It's just going to download into the board. OK, and the board won't do anything because I'm not sending any data down from the computer. So this is the other file which is going to be available to you also on the Internet. Um, I'm going to run this and just show you what happens first and then we'll go through it and I can talk you through. So as you can see, this is the screen that pops up and I am just going to start my animation. Press P for my, oops, click. P, P for, P for PNG. So there you can see we've got on the screen here, we've got uh, an animated flame and that's coming from this quite small PNG animation which is loading frame by frame in the background and we are looking at the individual pixels converting the pixels with a little bit of um, pixel blending uh, we're going to go pixel by pixel just to see what the colors are and then we are putting it into an RS-232 serial stream and we are sending that out as a think about one meg data rate so and here you can see on the uh, on this camera you can see that's what how it is coming out and then if I turn around oops, turn around that to our camera here you can come see that running so there may be I think that I think the I think it should be spot on I don't think there's any delay coming from there it's pretty spot on um, now as that's running I'm just going to show you what we can do with the software. So um, there's a grid sitting. If I press G uh, here, you can just move the grid around. And as I take the grid off of the flame, nothing comes out. But if I slowly put the grid over the flame, you can see it basically coming down like that. We can also adjust our corner pins. So if you press C, we can adjust the corner. So say, for example, I put more of the flame into the square you'll get more of a flame here at the bottom and if I put more of the flame into the top you'll see that we get now quite a raging fire and this is all happening in real time so you can see the corner pinning if we could have a lot of flame at the top and press G there we are so we could have see corner pin there and corner pin there 
So we've got a nice heavy flame at the top and quite a small flame at the bottom. Or if you want a, a large flame at the bottom and also a large flame at the top. And there we go. And so basically what we're doing, we're creating a grid which is uh, sampling the LEDs on the screen and then transferring to our output buffer. So I'm sure you want to know how it all works. OK, I'm going to show you exactly how that all works right now. So before we can start sending any data down from the computer to the electronics, we need to agree on a protocol from both ends. So in this little system here, I'm using an uncompressed protocol using ASCII characters. The first character that's going to go down is a 254. That indicates the start of the of the data. Then we're going to send down six bytes of data. So FFFFFF means 255 at green, 255 at blue and 255 at red. And I'm doing this for three LEDs, just for example. And then we end with a 255, character 255. So when the electronics receives a 255, it knows that it should have received all this information, then it can process it and then display it on the LEDs. So the whole length of this packet of data is going to be 20 bytes. So to demonstrate this protocol working, we need to send down some data from the computer to the electronics. And the simplest way to do this is to show you a couple of scripts. Now on the screen, I've got one script open in Power Basic. This is PBWIN IDE version nine. And all we're doing is opening up our COM port at 921600 board rate. We're then declaring a buffer and we're filling the buffer with green, blue and red in this hex format. And then I'm filling up the rest of the buffer with zeros. So here we are in our protocol, com send 254 plus the buffer plus 255. So when we run this, and I compile and run, there we are, we get a green, a blue and a red LED. In another script, I've written one which will clear the LEDs. So opening COM4 at 921600. So we make a loop here, a hundred times loop. So we're going to put zeros on the buffer and then we're going to send that buffer 254 plus the buffer plus 255. So I run that and that's now cleared the LEDs. So that demonstrates that the protocol that we've got works quite well. Now I'm going to show you the code that's in the processor. So here we are in MPLAB and let's just see if our executables run. So I'm going to run the com test, which we compiled in pbwin. Double click and there we are, the lights come on and clear LEDs and they should go off. So com test on and off. So I'm just going to leave those on. So in MPLAB, this is the script s20.c. Now this script is available in the description down below. So feel free to download it and play with it. So we are declaring a board rate of 921600 here in use RS232. Our clock processor speed is 64 megahertz. So here I have in this line here, I have declared a 1000 byte serial buffer so that the information from these applications can come down and it will go into this buffer just here. In our main loop, I've declared an interrupt here, int RDA, and int RDA will be called and processed in this serial interrupt routine here. In the main function, in the main loop function, we are calling a function called check comms overflow. Now this is quite important. What this will do is if there's any problems with overflow or too much data coming down, it won't crash out the UART. So this will always keep that UART active. And I've seen so many projects where UARTs fail because people don't check their overflows. So this will keep it alive always. So when a character comes down into the ISR routine, it will be received in the get C here for 232. As you see in the protocol, if it's a 254, it will reset the serial position. And if it's a 255, it will process that information in the buffer. And any other information will just get 
dumped into the serial array. So what happens when a 255 is is uh, found? Well, firstly, we process the buffer, so that serial buffer. So here we are in process. We're looking for 100 characters of data and we should know the positions in there with a little simple bit of mathematics. So it's every six bytes of data need to be transferred into three separate arrays. In set patch, we are just repositioning the odd and even lines because our LEDs are going in opposite directions every 10th LED. So this is what's happening in set patch. And then in the function send LEDs, we are just going through the list of LEDs, here we are, and sending it out into our assembly code, which is at the bottom of the script. So that is pretty much all that's in the interrupt receiving code to drive the LEDs. And majority of the work for the flame animation is now being done in our larger Power, Power Basic application, which is doing all of the animations. Don't forget, all this code is available to you in the description down below, so feel free to download and play, please. So now you've seen how the RS-232 works for the C code, um, the Power Basic script is available uh, in the description also down below. And this uh, Power Basic script is exactly what I'm using to drive the LEDs. So let's just compile the script and have a run. There we are all compiled and we can send out our LEDs uh, nicely just like that. So the script itself is um, in the folder which is available to you uh, in the description down below and um, the LED so the um, the flame effect is actually coming out of this folder here uh, which is a sequence of PNG images now you could feel free to replace those images for something else um, or play with the code and see what you can do with it so I'm not going to go through the power basic code in this video but once you've downloaded it and you've got comments or you want to ask a question then please feel free to uh, write it down in the comments below but I will probably go through the script in a future video and go through it in quite some detail if you're interested uh, there we go I kind of hope it all makes sense it's um it's not the most simple of projects to explain, but um, fingers crossed you may be able to understand it. Um, don't forget all the comment, all the that, all the code is in the description down below, so you can just download it as you want to. And uh, but feel free, feel free to leave a comment or a question if you want to ask any questions. Uh, I like to see the comments; they're really good. Um, and in the next video, we're going to basically store this information in the chip. So we're not going to be using a 232 line at all. We're just going to be a dedicated, a dedicated just fire on a pick. That's going to be a challenge, but I'm sure we can get it working. So until next time, thanks very much for watching. And um, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And if you haven't liked the video, or if you did like the video, then please feel free to give us a like. Anyway, take care until the next time. Ta-ta.